All right, guys, we're back for round, what are, what are we at, nine's review. Um, not a bad round, honestly. Um, I thought the score was a bit better, but uh, it turns out there were, were a couple of people that scored higher. Top 6%, you know, looking for top 1% this time of year. Um, 22.34 is not the worst ever, 2.34. Uh, up in rank inside the top 2K right now, so 1,700. That's absolutely fine by me. Uh, I'm hoping at some point this year I can break top 1,000. That would be cool because uh, it would be the first time I've ever done, I have ever done that. Um, but, yeah, we're getting to the team. The team uh, value is also really good at 13 million. That's pretty good. Uh, I have seen that all the top rank guys are, like, over 13, so that's probably where I'm, I'm behind. I'm behind about one premium, I reckon, and that's what's keeping me out of it. A um, couple of weird scores, honestly, throughout the weekend. Dawson was kept pretty low. Uh, I I thought he'd do all right, but, yeah, uh, they put a bit of work into him. Uh, Laird did get subbed off, and that led to Dawson kind of getting a quick, like, plus 20 in the fourth. Um, helped his score, because it, it, it was looking a bit lower than this, to be honest. Stewart was fine. Um Went to the game and I thought, oh my god, because I had the vice captain on him originally. I was like, the first quarter, maybe the first half, it went by, and I was like, ah, oh, here we go. I'm going to see a 140 here, and I've just taken the VC off him. <clears throat> Didn't end up being too bad, thankfully. 115 is definitely something you live with. Um, Zebul was good as well. Didn't catch much of the North game. North are just really, really hard to watch. Um, even if it's for Supercoach, it's really hard to watch. And this game made no sense being in Tassie. I understand contractual agreements to be in Tassie. This should have been at Marvel. Should have been at Marvel. And I guarantee I will put my name on it. Next year, it will not be at Marvel. It will be in Adelaide. Guarantee it. Because they don't want the Horn Francis booing. Which he's going to get. Just, just let it happen. Let it... Yeah. The kid will get over it. Uh, but yeah, Zebul was fine. Dacos was really good, uh, 40-something touches. He's the Brownlow medalist of this year, uh, barring like a suspension or a injury, which I think missing at the Brownlow for an injury is so stupid. I think that uh, as long as you're not suspended, that, that's how it should work. Yeah, so he's doing good. Day, uh, Will Day, a bit of a down one, but I thought he could have gone a bit higher. Uh, round, uh, when did I tune into the game? It was... Midway through the second, start of the third, stuff like that. He was tracking pretty good. Um, I think it was just a slow fourth, and that's what happened. Orc's still playing the game, try to get the number one pick. Uh, I'll just I'll put this out there. Uh, if they lose to West Coast in Tassie, uh, that's a tanking job. They they should have to forfeit the pick. Uh, I'm dead honest on that. Like, they, If they lose this game, that is tanking. West Coast are the worst team in the league. <clears throat> it's it's not get that twisted, you know. They are the worst team. They almost lost by a hundred to Gold Coast. They are the worst team. If Hawks lose, that's insane. Chase Jones was pretty good in the second half. Um, he really benefited from Led going out. I reckon he, he, like Dawson, probably went plus twenty, plus twenty five in that quarter. Uh, the bench is just dead. So Jin Carter should hold his spot, but. Uh, Kaltner are in a rough patch of form at the moment, so they have to make some change. I don't know if they're going to move around any magnets in the midfield, so then it just leaves the forwards and the backs. Saad has a, a job locked down. They're not going to move him. Doherty has a job. Um, Weedering, but then you know, you're kind of then left with just other guys, and that's where I think Chinkotta could either get dropped, but then Cowan wasn't too good, and that's who they've got as a replacement. Or they just bring up someone completely new. It's possible, uh, at least because he was basement price, he's made 115k, 116k. Um, Constable, I don't think he's getting a game. Uh, he's dominated in the twos. He's getting like 30 plus touches a game. And they're just adding obstacles for him at this point. So first it was, he needed just a defender to go down. Now it's, oh, he needs a defender and a midfielder to go down. Uh, and now Fiorini is in over him, so he needs not only <laughs> this guy and this guy, but he needs this guy as well. Like, 
I don't think he's getting a game. Unless, like, uh, they have an absolute terrible round where, like, Carnage hits their entire team. Um, it's crazy because I don't need him to play one more. Uh, the vice captain captain for this week, I did go with Bont. I expected a lot more from Bont, but, um, I mean, credit to Carlton, they did try to limit him. Uh, I reckon the Brownlow race is probably Dacos. Um, he's got the big lead, and then number two is Bont, and then number three is like Petrarca. Um, or maybe, you know, John Dawson has had some really good games. I just don't know how his games look in terms of voters, um, because there's also been big goal kickers in those games. Bont was all right. Um, Clayton wasn't the best, and that's why I didn't really feel comfortable taking this. If this was like 125, I would have taken it. Um, expected a lot better against the Hawks. No tagger or anything, just a bit poor. Maybe, you know, it is one of those guys that plays to the occasion, and if he's playing a bottom team, then it's just, it's not, he's not going to be trying. Uh, Laird got subbed off, like I said, probably stopped him from hitting the ton, yeah, officially, but he's still close enough to it, so it's fine. But this is such an L pick. Um, he was 700k. This was a terrible, and it's hard to, uh, talk about this, like, in hindsight, because last year he was, like, the best player in Supercoach, so... It's a bit hard um, to say, like, oh, my God, you shouldn't have picked him, you shouldn't have picked him. But I guess at 700k, you just you shouldn't be picking those players. Um, I did see that floated around a lot in the preseason. So I guess next time, don't pick 700k, guys. Wait for him to drop and then trade him in. But then saying that, a lot of people did that, and their rank is not as good. Uh, so maybe I, I was fine. I just picked the wrong one. I should have picked Oliver instead. I mean, if I, I think if I had Oliver, I'd be a lot better starting rank. Mm, I don't know. I'll do that, like a, a review, probably around the buys, because I think that's a good time to review teams. Blair, uh, spoke about Laird. Uh, Tom Green was solid. Uh, GWS were just, yeah, they couldn't compete with Collywood. Wasn't happening. Collywood's midfield is a terror right now to go against, honestly. Who they got this week? Carlton. Carlton's going to get smashed. If you've got Crips, uh, A, you should have already traded him out like rounds ago. I don't know why you've still got him, but you got to get rid of him. I don't know about Walsh this week just because of how Collywood have been really impacting other mids' scores. Um, maybe hold one more week on Walsh. I did see he's got 40% forward time, so he'd get forward DPP, which is brilliant. And it probably does make him like a, a D1, D2 type, depending on how Toronto goes the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, uh, against Collywood, it's kind of a dead game for teams, for midfielders right now. Merritt, this role sucked. Uh, I hope this isn't indicative of the role he's going to have with no parish. I hope this was just like because of the game. Um, they did have... I want to say a couple of injuries. I wasn't watching this too closely, I'm not going to lie. This game did not entertain me at all. Even with the Joe Danaher stuff, wasn't interested. Um, <clears throat> so he was playing on ball, and then he'd move up half forward. Um, then he'd play outside and stuff like that, and they'd move other people in. You know what? I'm just going to bring up the CBAs. Yeah, so as we can see, round nine... Uh, 62%, that's just not good enough. Um, Shield at 67 is crazy, and Joy Coldwell at 71%. That puts him in, like, elite class, basically. Uh, can't be happening. So, the rest of the year, the lowest he's gone is 64. And that was against Saints. Uh, maybe this is, like, a top team thing. They're moving him around. We'll wait and see, because... Coldwell being in for for Parish isn't the worst thing ever. I just I think it's not the correct play. I think the, the better play is you just up a up setter field or Shield who's played as a midfielder. Um, Andrew Phillips, I guess they're switch rocking now. Um, yeah, not a fan of that. And if that keeps happening, he's going to be a trade out because he's this is going to be a, a max for him. He's ninety five to like a hundred. 
Rosie has continued a, a good streak of games, even though like the scoring hasn't been insane. Like he hasn't put up one forty. Um, he's he's just good, uh, fun to watch. Port's been fun to watch, which I don't really say too often. Um, didn't watch this game, but yeah, you know, other weeks they've been pretty good to watch. But yeah, you know, Butters is so much better than Rosie. So with Butters, you got the durability risk, which is huge because he leads into everything head first. Um, he will get hurt at some point. But, I mean, there's no soft tissue history. He's never done an ACL, MCL, you know, any ligament damage. So anything that happens is just kind of coincidence. Uh, Rose is a lot safer in that regard. So it's it kind of just measuring it out. Maybe you could have had both of them. You know, both of them would have been fine. Uh, Hopper injured, uh, injured his calf. Have to trade him out. He's gone. I was really banking on him just making money this week. I can't remember what his break even was. Does this show me? I think it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. That's tough. What was his projected score? Doesn't say that either. All right. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. I just, I want him to make money because it would really help with trading him out. But since that's not the case, um, he's still got to go. It's just a matter of who does he go to. Atkins was... I mean, he started the game so slow, but the role he's in is probably going to guarantee him about a 60 per week. Ideally, you'd loop him with a, a good rookie in Ashcroft, but me going Ashcroft to Atkins doesn't allow me to do that. Um, guess I just have to field him. He should be locked in for like high 50s, 60 minimum. He's He's got like Constable's role basically, but a bit better, just because he's a bit better defender. Um, but yeah, on the bench, Luke Edwards played, so he made money. Break even a 50, uh, and they're playing in Tassie. Ah, uh, that's not good. Because the, I don't think Michael... I always get this guy's name wrong. Matthew Johnson, I don't think he's getting the game. Ralston, I don't think he's coming back for a while. Combin's done. Angwin is, like, so fringe. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets dropped any week. Chin Cotter, like I said, could get dropped. But it's just a matter of, do they have anyone to drop him to? Because Cowan's no good. Constable's not playing. So that just leaves such a dead bench here. And that sucks. And it's going to really hurt during the buys. Um, which is kind of one of the things I'm trading for this week is just to get live bodies on the bench for the buys. Um, yeah, that's it's not good. One, two, three, four D DNPs on the bench. Not great. Uh, the Rucks were amazing this week. I thought Darcy was very, very, very good against Sydney. Against, you know, not great Ruckman, but um, yeah, he was really good. I think his score was just limited by the midfield kind of not pulling their weight, honestly. He could have gone even higher. Um, same with Marshall. I thought Marshall was crazy underscored. Um, I thought he was dominating the ruck. Adelaide were dominating the game, don't get me wrong. And that's probably like the reasoning behind it. But I thought Marshall was dominating in the ruck against uh, kind of like their... They've put Phil, Phil Thorpe in there. Oh, that's a tough name for me. Uh, O'Brien and stuff. I thought he was dominating them, but yeah, it is what it is. Taranto, not a, not great this game. A lot of helicopter kicks. Um, just what you get with him. Dunkley, 103. Um, he is tough, man. Like, Brisbane are a good team. Their midfield, very, very good. Lockie Neal, extremely good player. But it's just, it's not kind of translating to many points. I don't know if that's a game plan thing. I have got a bit of a cold, sorry. Um, but yeah, it, it's not really converting to a lot of super coach points. Uh, Cornelio was all right, but like I said, they just got they were under the pump the entire game. Sheasel down game, but he's fine. You've got to keep him. Like you know, who else are you going to play there? There's no one really, unless you're going up to a premium. You have to leave Sheasel in. Whether you've got him as a forward or a back, he just has to stay in. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to pause because I need to blow my nose. Uh, okay. Um, I was like, yeah, Sheasel. Sheasel's good. Keep him. Samson Ryan has been a great rookie. Amazing. Um, put up big scores when I needed him. Held down this D5, D6 spot. Um, 82, 71, 104, 77. That's so good for a rookie. Um, and the upcoming games for him, Essendon with a low break even should be fine for him, honestly, at the MCG. Port, he might struggle there, but not not a super high break even. And, uh, I mean, he's projected for a pretty fair score. GWS, I reckon he scores good against. Um, Optus, Frio, probably, around here is probably where you got to get rid of him. Um... 15 is his buy. You could probably hold him, but you will lose a bit. But if you can get like 380 out of him, then that's that's great. And then Seamus Mitchell, he was pretty good this week. Um, so was Weddle. Is that? Yeah, it was Weddle. I think he also had like a 70s score, 65. Yeah, both were fine trade-ins, I guess. Um, couldn't go wrong with them. And then on the bench, Angwin did play, but I don't think he was too good. Um, he he had a couple of score involvements and made right decisions with the ball in terms of like not playing selfish, but yeah, it's a bit tough. Yeah, as for trades, like I said, Hopper's got to go. You just you have to. Uh, this is multiple weeks, and then multiple weeks after because the calf issue is not just one and done. Who is the other guy? Mills. Mills is a trade. Uh, it's four to six. And then you probably add on two more because he's going to be managing the calf. Um, Mills is going to be a really good pickup next year. Uh, probably a starting pick. So I can't see him hitting like 600k from after being out four to, five, four to six weeks. Uh, as for trade-ins, I really do want Goulden. So I've dropped so many points to Goulden this year. So I don't know if this is me rage trading. Uh, I should have brought him in last week instead of Merritt. But logically, I think Merritt was the better play um, in the moment. Because you, you didn't know Mills was going to get injured. But with Mills' injury, his CBAs are going to skyrocket. Let's just have a look. Mills, has Mills missed a game so far? No. But he did miss the preseason. In the preseason, he was a 70% CBA guy. 50, 50, 41, 61 against Richmond. Only 48. A bit lower than I thought it'd be. I guess they got Roe Bottom in there. It's kind of like the direct Mills replacement. Parker's up. Uh, Warner. Warner's not bad. What's Warner's thing at? His price. Warner might be a good one. Because now he's going to have pressure on him. Uh, 509. Probably want him under 5. Even just for the optics of like 499 would be better. Yeah, probably just missed the week on him. That's a shame. Hmm, that's a shame. He would be alright for under 5. Um, otherwise, I think just pay up, get Gordon. And if you have Goulden, go to another team. Like, just, just go to another team. You don't want to overload on Sydney players. They're, they're not a good team at the moment. Too many injuries. Uh, who else? Uh, hmm, I guess Combin, maybe it's time. Have we got a rookie? Uh, we did. Um, Drury. But is he going to keep his spot? I don't know if he's keeping his spot. North are tanking. That's that's obvious, all right? Oliver Dempsey uh, played okay. I don't think he did anything spectacular. Um, mm, Nevitt was a good rookie to bring in last week, but missed the boat on him. And uh, I'm done with paying up for rookies because none of them have worked out. Thomas Berry probably gets dropped. Uh, not a lot of names. What am I doing? Dr I just go Drury. Uh, what buy does North have? Let me just do that. I just want to see what buy they have. I probably am using that last boost. Just, you know, too many. 
So they have 15. Okay, that's not bad. So it's uh, of players I care about. Oh, one, two, three, four. Ooh, I might trade Chase Jones this week. What's his break even? 88, yeah, probably. One, two, three, four. Trading for a playing player. One, two, three, four, five. He's not playing. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, one of these guys would play. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. Eventually trade you for someone that's playing. 15. That's not great. That's not great. I probably want 18. Um, mm. Need some people that are going to play. What if I go chase Jones? Now I'm taking too long doing this. Uh, let's see. Atkins to defense. I would really like Gordon in the forward line. So it got. I mean, my forward line's done, isn't it? Gordon, Rosie, Taranto, Dunkley, Cogs, Sheasel. Sheasel could go back, I guess. And who am I going to put there? 462. An extra 100k would have got me Butters. Do I like Butters better than Gordon? Ownership is 6% versus Gordon being 46. Ooh, this could be a... This could be a move right here. Hmm. Let me have a look. Let me see the optics of it. Uh, him in, and then I need a midfield of 450. Doesn't exist, right? Probably not. And I don't know if I want two rookies on field. Uh, what if I do that? And that. Ooh, then a midfielder. Then I don't want to be playing one. That's actually not. That might be the play there. Then a, a rookie midfielder that is pretty good and going to hold his spot. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Harry Sharp is interesting. I think he's all right. Perez is injured or dropped, one of the two. Uh, Jai Clark, no, he was only a sub. I'm not a fan of Sharp, but let me have a look. Uh, Brizzy, Brizzy, Brizzy. He didn't get one, did he? No. Where's he playing? Is he playing as a forward? All right, give me a second. I'm going to pull up team sheet. All right, so he is like just dead ass a, a wing. That's that's all he is. Uh, he sh I brought in a couple of wings this year. One, two. Yeah, not really. Um, mm. Do I want another one? Who have they got out? Who's out? Lineups, who's missing? Uh, John Still, no. Pryor, no. Coleman's probably going to come back at some point. Rich has to come back. Uh, McKenna's been kind of disappointed last couple. Wait, what? You, oh. Round two. Why am I on round two? Oh, why has it done that? Nine. Uh, where, are we? where are we? Brizzy. Hmm. Okay, so... Lyons has to come in at some point, right? He's too good to be in the twos. Jaron Lyon is a really good player. He's playing on the bench. Hmm. Their wings are Barry and McCluggage. Ryan Lester? That can't be right. That, no way am I saying Ryan Lester. I don't have all right, well, that's something for research. For now, I'll chuck him in because the score is pretty good. See how that looks. Uh, at least 300k in the bank for next week because there will be something go wrong this week. Guarantee it. I mean, even if it's just like... I'm not going to go Atkins early. Edwards? Edwards probably going to drop. So, 
two let's say 240 say it drops 12k 240 plus 300 puts me at over 500 i'll i'll find someone <laughs> other guys i was looking at um so we got hawks ruckman so lloyd meek has been really good these last two and um first melbourne there was no ned reeves so that's kind of like the Oh, but he's not. He's only scoring a goal because of no Ned Reeves. Against Gorn and Grundy, he was by himself. And then Frio, he did have Ned Reeves, and that was scoring a goal against Darcy. I think this guy's actually not too bad. Um, if he was a solo ruck, I'd probably put some thought into him. Against West Coast, the worst team in the AFL. Uh, worst team in any football, uh, Australian rules football at the moment. Even their waffle team is bad. Uh, and Saints, I guess, isn't the best. The Port's pretty good for Ruckman. Uh, Brizzy, not bad. Gold Coast, not terrible. Carlton's pretty good. Yeah, no, I'm kind of even putting myself onto this pick, honestly. What if I... What if I, what if I did that? Did... Him there. Nah, I won't do that. What am I doing? Alright, I'll think about it. I think he's really good though. He's a player that I found and I think he's going to do pretty well. Uh, just for the price, it, it's a bit weird because how much is he going to really make? Is he going to hit 500k? Doubt it. Is he going to hit 450? Possibly. Um, but yeah, let me know how your teams went. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all next week. Tasty out.